Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and a man with far too much free time on his hands. This is not a test. This is a random review. With all this talk lately about the accuracy or lack thereof of the new Velocitron Scourge, I thought it was a good time to go back and look at the original just to see what it was supposed to look like and why I don't really believe Hasbro's excuses as to why the new one looks the way it does. Uh, now before we begin, this is a Patreon sponsored review, so thank you guys very much for the support. Thank you for getting me so close to my next goal. We're like very very close to it uh so thank you guys so much for that however that that's a that's a cheap plug we're here to talk about the toy and we're talking about one of the most popular toys of the early 2000s look at this beautiful machine so it's obviously the g2 laser prime mold we know that one pretty well at this point done in a very lovely black and chrome color scheme the cab featuring some translucent red as well as some metallic teal lining. I will say there are, to my knowledge, about three different versions of this toy as the U.S. release, and uh, I'm using the most common ones right in the middle. An earlier release had the pink translucence from the Japanese version, and a later release actually had a couple paint apps missing on the hands. A little bit weird, but uh, but that's what we're dealing with here. So we're right in the middle. We're in the butter zone. This is kind of like the ideal U.S. version of Scourge. And it's a lovely version regardless of which, uh, which uh, you're looking at. So we're going to look at these individually so I can get them on camera a little bit better. The truck itself is a very beefy 90s semi-truck looking very very strong love the look of this thing so you see all these lovely teal details here at the top lots lots of lines going through it seemed like everywhere there was a raised edge they put in some kind of tampograph line and then they painted a little bit more here on the top and on the hood itself then we even get into the doors and they panel lined the doors in that metallic teal as well looks absolutely amazing and even more here along the back lots of it lots of it it looks stunning like it doesn't seem like an evil color scheme but it just comes across like like very wicked uh, aside from that we got a little bit of light gray plastic to make the smokestack as well as some dark gray from his robot mode poking through i will admit there is quite a bit of that stuff poking through here in the back as well as a gap through here for the legs as well as the feet just kind of sticking out. See, even in 2000 or even, I guess I should say in the mid 90s since it's laser prime, they didn't really know what to do with prime's feet. You know, the idea was that you were supposed to have the trailer and the truck together so no one's going to actually see the feet or the exposed legs. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we kind of like seeing Prime just without the trailer sometimes. Toward the front, a little bit more translucent. We'll do uh, the headlights as well as some chrome for the bumper and the grill. Looking exceptionally nice. And then, yeah, translucent red for the windows. Decepticon symbol. Now, of course, in the cartoon, in the Takara version, it's an upside-down black Autobot logo. That was pretty much removed from the U.S. release, which is a shame because it's a pretty unique standout piece. But still, hard to argue. It is an absolutely gorgeous looking truck. Now we'll look at the trailer, which is a massive piece of chrome on black plastic looking absolutely menacing. I love how the original Laser Prime had these big stickers across the side of its tanker mode. So when you see the tanker here... It's actually a lot closer to life, obviously not as blinged out as this one is, but it's nice to see it looking normal and ordinary. You know, it kind of, uh, it, it kind of works for Scourge, who is, uh, you know, more pragmatic as a villain than uh, a very uh, 90s Optimus Prime style. But you definitely get a different profile for this piece in general, which is kind of cool. You can see across it lots of mechanical details going through the middle, as well as uh, spots where humans would use to uh, 
step up onto it and whatnot. Chrome on the wheels as well, just like in the uh, the cab section. And yeah, lots of little panel lining and lots of little divides here and there to give it a more mechanical look. The only real detail we can spot in this mode is on the back where we can see a sticker, the only one on the toy, uh, that does uh, have the scored license plate as well as all the tail lights, turn signals, etc. And then D012 on the actual license plate piece, which would actually be his designation number in the Japanese version of the series. So nice that they kept a little bit of that in, even if they uh, took out a lot of the other signature pieces of Black Convoy, like the upside down Autobot logos. Still, it is a very cool, very cool look for the trailer. Now, the trailer itself does have a few extra things you can do. So for instance, you actually do have a disc launcher at the top that can turn around and uh, you twist one, fires the other. I don't want to do it for real because I don't want to have to go digging these things up. But you get the idea. I love disc launchers, by the way. Now, the disc set itself should have, uh, should have the upside down Autobot logo on it. They molded that out to avoid confusion. And instead, you just get these five flat discs that fit in the top. But still, that's better than nothing. And it still gives him a little bit more armament in this mode, which uh, otherwise he's lacking. Altogether, it is a pretty sizable vehicle mode. Fortunately, I have a tape measure handy, which will show you it's about 15 inches long altogether. You can't see the 15 on the screen. There you go. <laughs> just to make sure we're being legitimate here. But yeah, 15 inch long vehicle mode. Pretty hefty toy, you know? Certainly a lot bigger than we get these days. All right, we're gonna go transforming it now. Um, this is a generation two toy, so this is not the most complex process in the world. So first off, the trailer, the trailer tries to do some of it for you, but not quite. So first off, we're going to pop out the front here and I'm going to remove Scourge's gun. If there's a better place to hide it in that vehicle mode, I have not found it. Uh, it seems to be the only gap where there's enough room. Everything else actually stores very conveniently in this vehicle mode. From there, actually, before you transform, go ahead and remove these discs. You don't want them falling around everywhere. At that point, you're going to go under here and you're going to find that lever right there. That is going to, that is supposed to make this whole thing pop forward, but the spring is about 20 years old and I'm working on a glass surface, so I don't want that flopping over and banging into the glass. So I'm going to manually move it to that spot. Then I'm gonna come around to the front of this thing and lower down the rocket platform, which you're gonna notice has some problems. Uh, we will get to that. On this side, the disc launcher rotates up. On this side, a new missile launcher comes up and clips in right there on the ball joint. That is going to give us a very sizable <clears throat> base mode, which I will say looks a lot more impressive when it's in focus but also looks a lot more impressive than the original Generation 1 base where you, know, you got this little repair drone and basically, yeah, it just... Someone recently referred to it to me as like a coconut that opened up. And that's, that's kind of the opinion. If we want to add a little bit more to it, I'm going to mount this gun right up here so this tower can also have a little bit of armament. And that's going to be your base mode. Now... We'll go over the functions of the base mode just so you can get it, get an idea for just like how much is going on here. So for starters, uh, the disc launcher definitely still works. And then we added the missile launcher on this side. Five. There's five slots here for the launcher itself. Five buttons. So they are all spring launched. You're miss spring launched missiles in your transformer toys this one had five and guess what not only was it smart enough to actually store 
all of your miss, you know, five of your missiles right there inside the trailer. There's five more on top of that. This thing came with ten missiles all together. Because in the 90s, Hasbro knew the first thing a kid was going to lose was the firing missile, so they gave you spares. <laughs> Isn't it nice when they had extra budget to play with? On the other side, if we were talking about storage, you're going to notice this massive rocket with the red warhead on the tip. That is going to be our pressure launch missile, our air launch missile, which is what this thing here is for. So I can put that right there and that's ready to fire. Now the trick to this is that there is an air pump in the toy, which is removable. And that is how you actually launch the missile by squeezing down on this. The problem is the tubing is 20 years old and it is leaking a lot of plasticizer and it's leaking a lot of air. So I can't really get a good pressure launch on this anymore. It just kind of uh, just kind of makes an intimidating presence, really. But uh, fortunately, fortunately, like it just looks like rubber hosing. If you are fortunate enough to actually uh, know what you're doing, finding a new rubber hose is not hard. Then it's just a matter of popping the right things off and gluing new things in to restore the air seal and hopefully get your launcher working again. But as you can see, it's a very imposing base mode with a lot going on and a lot of weapon storage going on. I will tell you, there's three of these giant rockets too. The tanker can only store one. So even that, you got extras. No extra discs though, only five of those. I guess when it's a missile, Hasbro figures you're gonna lose it. If it's a disc, well, that's on you, isn't it? All right, so that's the base mode. And that is a very nice base mode, but we need to get to the robot. Now, like I said, this is not the most complex of transformations, so this will not take long. For starters, we're going to go on the underside and remove the sword from its storage spot, and then pull the legs outward, flip the feet like so, go ahead and separate the legs from there. Take this upper section and just start pulling it apart. It's going to clip here at the hands, so pop those out once you get a little bit of wiggle room. These are a little bit tricky. You're going to have to rotate them back and then forward in order to make the space and get all of the uh, big shoulders out. And from there, open up the belly. This little lever here at the top is going to help you flip the head out. Slot it into position, rotate around, and just like that, we've got a full robot mode for RID Scourge. See? Nice and easy. Now, isn't it amazing what they used to be able to do with toys before they decided everything had to be overcomplicated and take 30 steps to transform? So, we have a very, very powerful rendition of the Optimus Prime mold done up in a very beautiful combination of gray, black, and that teal, which is just, oh, oh, just dominating this color scheme. There is just something like really striking about that bright metallic light blue that's just really popping off of all that gray and black. It's a really cool choice. When red would have been the obvious, like evil, you know, color they could have gone with, they kept that more as an accent and everything else in here has been done in just this lovingly applied blue that looks absolutely awesome and does look very wicked and intimidating. It does look like an evil color scheme, despite being a kind of bright and poppy color. So, let's take a look at the head. Now, there's been black repaints of Optimus Prime before this. The Nebulon Quest one comes, or Nucleon Quest one comes to mind. However, none of them were specifically designed to be evil. They were just black repaints. This is an absolutely evil Optimus Prime. And as the first go at that, it's a really, really good choice. The G2 mold has a much sharper, more angular head than the original. Much meaner eyes, too. It's supposed to give that 90s kind of like intimidation feel to your hero. But here it does come off exceptionally evil looking. You have to remember, this is Generation 2. This is only the fifth time 
that the Optimus Prime head sculpt has ever been made. So this is you know one of the rare times when it's actually uh, one of the rare times back then when it's actually been redone. And to go in that direction is really interesting and creates a really cool figure and a really unique look, especially when you give it an evil black paint job. So the robot itself, exceptionally well proportioned. He has a lot of power to his design, especially in those huge wide set shoulders, but nothing looks off. Nothing looks awkward. His arms are the right length. His legs are the right length. His head is the right size. Everything about this toy is just kind of spot on for what it really should be. The detailing is exceptionally well done. And as you can see, very clean. You know, it's got that cab as a backpack, but you know, you don't have to like flip it up there. It's not clipped in or anything. It's not going to fall. It's just there. It's not in the way and it looks fine in the robot mode. So no real complaints here. At the shoulder, you've got those cannon barrels that have been lovingly painted. They got a very, very nice helping of that blue. Stickers across the arms and chest. This is where I don't buy Hasbro's excuse of, well, we had to make it black uh, because of the translucent pink, and it has to match the vehicle mode. No, it doesn't, because Scourge's chest never exposes the vehicle mode chest because it's not a real chest. For the R.I.D. version, it wasn't supposed to be a window chest. So you could have painted the entire thing over in gray, given a little bit of tampograph to the chest window instead of you know leaving it translucent, and fans would have just thanked you for being accurate. Instead, we've got this whole controversial hullabaloo over uh, Black Convoys, Nemesis Primes, and whatever. The big change, of course, to the American version is the Decepticon logo here on the shoulders. Keep in mind, Decepticons were a pretty rare thing at this time. We are still dealing with Predacons and even into R.I.D. So the fact that the Decepticon symbol came back was kind of a big deal. Through the midsection, that traditional silver Optimus Prime stripe has been replaced with a teal. Lots more of that teal just coming through. And again, the panel lining there on the thighs, like they get in those little details and it just makes it pop so nicely. Yeah, there really isn't that much paint going on besides it. They really do let that teal do the talking throughout this entire robot. Not that I'm complaining, because it looks exceptionally nice. My focus does not look exceptionally nice, but hey, I'm trying. So, if we want to arm this guy, uh, that's pretty easy to do. So, uh, we're going to assume he's a righty, so there goes his sword. And his traditional uh, translucent, well... Traditional would be a translucent hot pink, but we're going with red here because Hasbro is still avoiding pink at all costs back in the 90s. I'm going to take his cannon, though, and we're going to unplug it from the base, and we're going to plug it in right there as well, giving him quite a bit more armament. Now, you've already noticed one slight problem that this toy has. You can see that shoulder's drooping. It didn't do that when I had the gun out of the hand but now that it's got a little bit of weight on it it's having some trouble staying up in certain positions the one downside to this toy is it does rely a lot on friction to keep those big shoulders up so a toy that is 20 years old especially if it's seen a lot of play pretty common to see those shoulders drooping and uh, not really able to hold themselves up fortunately for mine it's only in a few positions it does that as you can see now he's holding himself just fine so that's the one downside to a toy like that. Also, you've got the old-fashioned things like the leg slides that could fail over time. So be a little if you buy one, especially if you get it new in box, which is like 200 bucks these days, be a little bit uh, be a little bit cautious with it. Articulation-wise, head does rotate left and right all the way around. Shoulders are technically universal. You've got a swivel here at the torso and then an outward hinge to create lots of range of the arm movement. A bicep swivel and a 90 degree elbow, all working very well. Nothing at the waist. I lied, it's been a long time since I moved this toy. <laughs> I'm an expert. So, universal hips as well as knees. All these are on detents. And the hips are nicely ratcheted to hold into various positions. There's no thigh swivel, which would have been nice, but we'll take what we can get. So he's lacking a little bit of modern articulation, but remember, Generation 2 was just starting to play around with the idea 
of giving transformers like full ranges of articulation. So this was actually really impressive for the time that it actually got this much posability out of such a big solid figure. So all that being said, RID Scourge, an exceptionally nice figure with a lot going on and a whole bunch of play value between everything he does. It is a little bit disappointing that the American one is so inaccurate, uh, at least the, the Velocitron one is so inaccurate to the original, but the original is still out there, and I still think it's a really good toy, especially if you are tired of how hollow and thin modern Transformers feel. This might be worth tracking down just for how chunk and solid it is, especially if you can get a nice minty one where the shoulders are still nice and stiff. So that is R.I.D. Scourge. And a beautiful toy, a, one of the most legendary repaints of all time. And yeah, uh, I'm still waiting for a modern equivalent that holds a candle to this because to date, I have not seen it. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.